Trap Live, everybody. Where the Junction Lounge, the Sport Trap Lounge here at Junction Bar and Grill is packed. Of course, we've got a lot of people tuned into this NFC Championship game, which has gone to overtime. Now, Andrew, why don't you explain some of the overtime rules, some of the new rules that, that went into effect uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm going to explain it for Donovan McNabb, who didn't even know about overtime, what Does happened. Is he still playing in the NFL? I don't know. He's, got, he one of those fat, he's got one of those fat neck beards. I have no, I have no idea. Rick Ross, who? Oh. So what happens is basically, you know, in the old way it used to be is, is a sudden death. Whoever was the team that scored first would win the game. Now, if you're the first team to score, so the Giants got the ball in this first possession, if they were able to get a field goal, the game would not be over. The 49ers would be allowed to kick another field goal on their next drive to actually tie the game up, and then it would go sudden death from that. Or if they scored a touchdown, then they would have won. It's like the college So first one to six, or if you kick a field goal first, you give the other team a try. And what did the Giants proceed to do in overtime? Well, they kind of uh, had a little drive there. They got sputtered out, so now they kicked, they punted. So now the 49ers, if they score, it, the game is over. Now it's automatically right now sudden death. So there's also rules that pertain to if you were to able if you were able to pick off a, a pass or a fumble and run it back. You know, like I said, the first team to score six, you know, is used in those circumstances. The first two drives would be uh, uh, the team that won. Safety too. Yeah, it also you had a safety too. Oh, safety so, is automatic. Yeah, it's just a field, you cannot win the game on a first drive field, field. goal. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's basically the rule. There it is. So right now it's going coming down to sudden death. 49ers have the ball, and let's see what happens. Now, and they score a touchdown. And Alex, Smith, oh, okay. Alex Smith looks like Alex Smith. Oh, okay. I know. I'm not looking forward to is this Pro Bowl. Oh, I do, I do. I did see Dwayne Brown, I think, got named to the Pro Bowl. Chris and Myers. Chris Myers, who was totally deserving. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Shout out to the Texans. Uh, man, how about those Texans? You know what? Like, we put a bow on them on Thursday night, but they had a great season. Uh, I'm looking forward to their draft because if we come back and we have a healthy match shop, Arian Foster sticks around. Are you under the impression that Mario Williams is going to be back? I don't really care if he comes back. Only And I only say that because... We can be fine. This team can be fine without him. We should in the second half. We can be fine without him. Now, if we can work him into the budget that we already have, and you know, not have to bring. I don't want us to bring in a new 3-4 DN and try and work that guy if we already have Mario. But if Mario is going to command ridiculous money, I don't think they should pay him. I'm of the opinion you need to keep Arian Foster, keep what we have with the Ben Tate, you know, situation of the one-two combo, and maybe use that money to maybe if we can't get that wide receiver in, in the first round or second round that we like, go out and get somebody, maybe go out and get a, some, uh, someone in the secondary, another player. I just want to, I just want to use that money to free it up to really address other needs, and if we end up that... You know, the three, four outline, uh, outside linebacker ends up being the biggest need. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring back Mario. Well, if you in a perfect world, when you're picking in the 20s like the Texans will be, like you mentioned earlier, seven up from the bottom of the draft, what receiver would you take? What receiver A do you think? I'm going to let you get your Mel Kuyper on right now. What receiver do you think will be available for the Texans? And who would you take if you had your druthers? I mean, obviously, I think the, the best player out there is, is uh, Justin Blackman. I don't think he's going to be available. I think he's probably going to go in the high, probably top ten, if not top five. He's just that good. I think there's a kid out there, you know, Kendall Wright, um, one of the kids from uh, Baylor. That it's kind of been a name float out there. Some people have him as the number one wide receiver because he's much faster than Justin Blackman. But Justin Blackman has the NFL size. But I definitely think wide receiver is something they need to possess, uh, address in the draft. It also needs to be someone who's fast. We don't need to get someone who's a, a bulkier guy that's a position guy. We kind of have that with Kevin Walter. We, I think we need someone that's more of a burner, someone that can kind of go up and down the sidelines. I think we had like a Tory Smith like Baltimore did. That would be a great compliment to Andre. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's plenty of those guys out there in the draft uh, as far as receivers go. But I think if you, if, you, if you do shore up something on the defense, it's got to be in the defensive secondary. Get another safety. Get you can never have enough. No, of course not. The Texans have learned the hard way over the years that you cannot have enough uh, defensive backfield help. And I think there are some great picks out there that the Texans could, could get in the second or third round with a steal. I agree. I agree. The wide receiver class is going to be pretty, I think, pretty deep this year considering some of the guys that are coming out. The one guy I just hope they do not draft is uh, Alshon Jeffrey from South Carolina. I've been saying for a long time this kid is a bust. Only because he's got the tight end body with the tight end speed. It just so happened that he plays wide receiver for that team. So I, I hope we don't get that guy. But outside of that, I, I would be pretty open to getting a Kendall Wright. And I think Kendall Wright, I'm looking right now at the ESPN uh, draft board. You know, they're scouts in top 32. And they have Kendall Wright listed as the 32nd best player. So that's maybe overall. Someone that, overall, that, someone that could be there for the Texans. So I'd be pretty excited if we were able to get someone like that. Now that was, of course, that was RG3's go-to receiver uh, right. out there at Baylor. And there's a lot of talk of RG3 that teams are going to have to try to trade up to that number two spot. 
from the Browns to, to probably get him. You think the Browns roll with Cole McCoy? I don't, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's going to be trying to tough to figure out where they're going in between them and Minnesota. I know Minnesota is going to be pretty picking uh, pretty high up there. Yeah, what is it? The, yeah, the Colts go first, then the Rams, then the Vikings, then the Browns. Okay, so the Browns are fourth. Teams are going to probably have to trade up to there if they're going to want RG3 because I think Matt Khalil is going to probably go probably in the first, you know, second or third round. You think second or third pick. You think Fisher comes in and lets Bradford kind of play it out there? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know what Jeff Fisher is doing with that, that coaching staff he's assembled. Some Let's talk about that. Some of the coaches he's brought in, I don't really understand. He brought in, who was it, um, the, the defense, Spagnola. Greg Williams. Spagnolo, yeah. yeah. But he brought in, what is it, Greg Williams as a defensive coordinator? Yeah. So he wasn't even good. Like, he wasn't even very good this year. No, he was sorry, Spagnola ended up in New Orleans taking right. the place of Greg Williams. I really yeah. didn't like Greg Williams as a coordinator this year. He basically, his MO is to rush the passer as much as he could to blitz to make up for inefficiencies of the front four. So I didn't really understand that. Their offensive coordinator, I was trying to figure out who they, they, uh, they got this week. Schottenheimer, is that who they ended up getting? Yeah. I'd say that could be a good hire. That could be a pretty good hire. Yeah, just ask the guys in New York how they felt about Well, I know who's going to get fired probably in the next day or two is Cam Cameron from Baltimore. He yeah. pretty much called a, a, a not... He could have been much more aggressive with his play calling. Sure. So Back-to-back -back weeks with Ray Rice under 100 total yards? Uh, no. Um, I think it was held to like, what was it, 50, um, 78 today? Yeah. And then last week, what was it? It was, 60? It was Yeah, it was low 60, 70s for so, sure. We'll see. For sure. Uh, Joe Philbin, of course, the, uh, the uh, offensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers, is now the head coach in Miami. He took the Dolphins position. I think that's an interesting hire because what happens if they get Flynn? Yeah. I mean, they can, if they can get Flynn and Matty him together. Flynn. Yeah. Of course, the backup phenom up there in Green Bay. Who everyone got the rave reviews from because of the last week he had against the Detroit game where he basically had an all-time Packers record game. And the Packers have been playing football since it was invented in America, you know? know. So, I, I mean, know. to set a new record, that's pretty impressive. Many, multiple records, multiple right. records, yeah. And people were talking about that he might even uh, dissuade people from voting Aaron Rodgers for MVP because of how it showed that it was maybe the system. But so it could be interesting. They can get Flynn down there into Miami. That could really turn things around. That would be great. That they haven't had a real legit quarterback since Marino. And they've been looking for that legit quarterback for some yeah. time now. So we'll for see. Some time now, for sure. For sure. Well, hey, we're still waiting on a result here in this NFC Championship game. We were hoping to be wrapping it up right now and giving you our Super Bowl predictions. But speaking of the NFL, uh, I tweeted this out last night. Um, there was talk that Jim Trestle might get the head coaching job uh -huh. for the Colts. Uh -huh. That would be one of the all-time uh -huh. worst hires I could ever uh -huh. think of. Because you know they have him as the quality control, like review guy. Right. Like I the replay. He's like the replay official. Yeah, he's like the replay booth guy. That, well, he's you know he's got the show cause, so he can't go back to college right now. So to bring him in as your NFL head coach, there's just so very, very, very few coaches that can make the transition from college to the pros. We have one in this game tonight, you know, but. It's just so, so, so few of the guys. Even Saban, who was on his game, he was basically a, a right above 500 coach in the NFL, but an outstanding guy in the, in, the, in the college ranks. So, Yeah, you know, I don't see – I mean, Trestle bringing in a rookie quarterback. Trestle with Peyton with Luck, that's a mess. Well, you said it yourself. Rob Lowe has already said that Peyton Manning is Well, and they fired Jim Caldwell this week. That's why we're talking about this. And Caldwell, yeah. I, I never thought Caldwell was a very good coach. Well, you have a new regime, you know, basically True. there in, in India. And they, they need to rebuild that thing from the total, from the very bottom up. I would not be surprised if they traded Peyton Manning for as many draft picks as they could and said, Andrew Luck is the new franchise. we got to go now. Let me tell you this. If Peyton Manning would have played this season and played healthy, we would not have seen him play earlier today. No. No, no, we wouldn't. No, the Texans still win that division. Whether or, not, so. whether or not Peyton Manning is healthy or not this season. They had major holes on the run game. They, their defense was pretty much terrible. Back to the what they were. Right. Yeah. Bob Sanders, the one-hitter quitter, he wasn't there to do much of anything for them. I, I just think that uh, that entire Colts organization needs to scrap that thing completely down and re rebuild it back up. And that means cutting ties with Peyton Manning, too. I think they could get a, a, probably one of the biggest offers ever as far as for a player that was ever been traded. Now, there's been a lot of rumors that Rex Ryan is very interested in Peyton Manning. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if Peyton Manning ended up as a New York Jet? That won't work. As a New York Jet quarterback in the same city well, as Eli? Well, already said that he wants to go to a team that has a good locker room. And did you hear the comments this week about San Antonio Holmes and what was going on at the locker room? No. We had LT on Inside the NFL on Showtime this week, and he said it was one of the worst situations he'd ever been in his career and, 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 and since he's ever played football. He said that's how bad the locker room was. And the media didn't know about it until the losses started to mount. And then 
he, he even called it the East Coast West Coast feud because they had Antonio Holmes, who's from the East Coast, and Sanchez, who's from the West Coast, from Cali. Uh, they didn't so go Biggie and Tupac. Yeah, they had an East no. Coast West Coast feud going on Come in the on. locker room, and LT was like, they asked him, do you think this team can coexist with Sanchez and Antonio Holmes next season? And he goes, you'd have to bring them both into this, to the table, and if they said they could work it out, then yes. And of course you have Texas making peace. Of course, LT is from Rosebud, Texas. Went to TCU. I don't want him on this team. No offense to him, but he, he just, I don't see what he can add to this team as a, as a third place running back. A third team running back. LT. LT. Well, LT, he's had his run. Right. When it didn't work out with the Chargers, I mean, hey, that tattoo might be permanent, but it was not going to last there. I mean, if he wants to come in for a mentorship thing where he wants to, you know, be just a part of a team that he thinks can make it and win it all, sure. Where, here, here in Houston? Yeah. Oh, I'll take LT as a mentor all day long. Right, All but I mean, as, as a guy who's a third down back, I, I, oh! I don't know. People are going crazy right now. We might have just had a game deciding Whoa. turnover where the Giants might be in field goal position right now. For the 20. Live on Sports Wrap Live, Sunday Wrap hey, who, up here. Hey, did you guys get the name of that kick returner? Was that, oh. was that Jacoby? Uh, nope. That was Ted Ginn Jr. Sounds like a Jacoby to me. It Man, I like thought you were about to say no, goal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was not Ted Ginn Jr. That's uh. My bad. So Ryan Williams, I think is his name. Ryan Williams. Yeah, Ryan Williams. Ouch, ouch. Well, Ryan Williams from Virginia Tech, I think. If you guys are not tuned in to us or the game right now, you must be living under a rock right now as we come up to the bottom of the hour here at 930. Wow, Giants just made a huge play to put themselves into position to win this game and set up the rematch wow. of the Super Bowl just a and few the end, years ago. And it just goes to prove that it's so hard to win an NFL playoff game. You know, it's almost easier to lose it than to win it. Hey, so I, think we, I think we saw that earlier early today. It's easier to lose it than to win it. That's, that's, oh, 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 oh. Man. About to get a million tweets. What? What? I know, I know. About to get a million tweets. It? <laughs> it's coming right now. It's Twitter's coming. about to go down right now. Well, hey, that, that's actually that's actually a punt that you want to field. I mean, that's not – he just fumbled it. He just basically muffed that punt. It's not like – it's not like – yeah, oh, it's game over. That's game over. The rematch. Well, we got, hey, it's going to come down to another kicker. Yeah. So, yeah, we yeah, saw yeah, what yeah. happened earlier. Uh -huh. Of course. Punt You're the kicker, babe. I've been telling you all You're show. The kicker. You're the kicker. Of course, Bun B, the Trill OG, is in the building. Been waiting on him to get here. I know he's been tuned into this NFL action all day. And, uh, man, you know what? We've just been trying to wrap this up so we can start to preview the Super Bowl. But uh, we're going to take a moment here for the H-Town Sneaker Summit. Of course, next Sunday at Reliance Center. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It's going down. Oh, yeah. 3 to 8 p.m. Of course, the finest in sneaker collections from around the United States and beyond can be found right over there. H-Town Sneaker Summit. Been going down since 2004. Breaking necks, as we say, since 2004. Kadoma's in the building. Of course, you guys can catch his Sneak of the Week each and every Thursday night in the 9 o'clock hour, bringing you the heat for your feet from the street each and every week right here on Sports Trap Live. Man, we blazed right through uh, Sneak of the Week number 128 on Thursday. Of course, that was the Air Jordan Chicago 10. Very, very popular. My man DJ Tito's got him on his feet right now here in the Sports Trap Lounge at Junction Bar and Grill. Yes, yes. Had all the accomplishments of Air Jordan through his first three championship runs uh, on the bottom of those sneakers. And if you didn't see the video, y'all can catch those at sportswraplive.com. And that's wrap with two Ps. Why, Andrew? Because two Ps are better than one. As my mama always says, um, you guys can also follow us on Twitter. If you want to follow the H-Town Sneaker Summit, just, just type in at htownsneakersummit.com. And I see my man DJ O'Cliff is in the building. Of course, he will be out there at Reliance Center holding it down, letting you guys know what's going down. As the Giants know what's going down, and they're just trying to run it out here. Get themselves in position to kick that win game-winning field goal. Hey, and Adam, while we missed it, uh, I think the 49ers picked up a third down conversion. They're now one for 13 for the game. Oh, excellent. Yep. <laughs> excellent. Too bad they couldn't get that punt converted. Oh. Oh, as they show the replay. Hey. At least it ain't Jacoby's house this weekend. That's all I got to say, man. That's all I got to say. Well, I, uh, I think we should start getting to it and start talking about this Giants uh, all right. Patriots are you, match. Are, are you ready for that? Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. All right, well, let's Bill, do it. Bill Belichick's my boy, but I, I'll tell you right now, I have the, the Giants winning it. The whole thing? Yep. 
Well, let's get right into it then. All Are right. you going to do a plus one on the helmet, Graham? Hey, let's get back. <laughs> let's plus get back. One on that. But Cruz doesn't need that. He's got the salsa. He already knows how to do the salsa shake, huh? Well, yeah, and Eli, Eli's that much more seasoned. I mean, Eli took huge strides this year through the adversity, through the up and down season. Tom Coughlin always being on that permanent hot seat, no matter what he does and what he accomplishes throughout the season. I mean, this Giants team is resilient, and I'm waiting for Premium Pete to call in right now just to tell us his predictions for this Start game. Start gloating. Yeah, you, you already know, man. You already know. Well, let's just recap real quick. Baltimore versus New England. Uh, it was a defensive struggle in the beginning. Billy Cundiff, I don't want to be you right now. No, you really don't because you, you could have given your team a chance to uh, at least play for overtime. Vince Wilfork had an amazing, amazing game. He sure did. He sure did. He stepped up and played like the player they signed when they signed Wilfork. And again, Ray Rice, they lost in the game where it, they had that game. They con controlled the in the clock for the most part. They wasn't a game that was a shootout. But Ray Rice only got 78 total yards. He never got on track, Adam. Well, you mentioned it earlier, Andrew. Joe Flacco actually played a decent game. He did. He played a very decent game. He was able to pick apart some of that Patriots secondary. Torrey Smith had a pretty good game. Anquan Bolden had some big catches. Uh, Lee Evans had a big catch that we still were talking about. Why was it not reviewed? Yeah. But yeah. Well, you hope they get the officiating right for the for the Super Bowl. And some guy named Sterling Moore. It was basically Sterling Moore Island out there at the end of the game. He was making all kinds of crazy plays for the Patriots. He's the guy that knocked the ball out of Lee Evans' hand and got the big swat at the end of the game before they got the you know missed field goal. Well, of course, Darth Belichick has always got those young uh, Siths lined up. Here it is. Speaking of lining up, we're lining up. Yep, we're lining up for a kick. Just got. Uh, I'm not taking a timeout. It's ice time, baby. Ice time. You got that? Time to ice the kick. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, okay. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that's, that's a corporate song all day. Of course. Hey, you got that on deck. And hey, this uh, Super Bowl is going to be in uh, Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, yeah. ironically. I can't wait till it goes to Giants, you know, uh, up in New York where you can get some real elements in there. Yeah. Snow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you already know. You already know. Yeah, well, of course. Ice in there, too. Yep. Yep. 30, it's a 31-yard attempt. Here we go. After the uh, delay of game. Let's see. We're going to pause right now for a... Uh, oh, another timeout? Maybe it was an you offside. you got to be kidding me. Uh, timeout you by gotta, the 49ers. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh. You know it's never going to end quickly. Speaking of putting on ice, we're putting our listeners on ice, if we have any listeners right now at all, because I know they're all tuned in to see how this happened. Oh, man. Flashing back to 2007. Does this team have what it takes? They can rush the passer. Just They're going to use the same formula they did last time to beat the Patriots. <laughs> rush the passer Put and let Eli brain. just go to town and just start flinging it. That Patriots secondary isn't very good. We saw it today. Plaxico Burris ain't walking through that door. <laughs> hey, but yeah, no, you know who is? Who? Victor Cruz. And who else? Hakeem Nix. And Mario who Manningham. Who else? They, Bear Pasco, this kid today catching passes. Yeah, Jake Ballard. I mean, these, they don't stop. They have offensive weapons. 25 ladders on my dresser. Man, I'll tell you what. Here we go. All right. This is the kick. This is going to be. But for New England, you know they're going to be totally motivated by revenge. Of course. The revenge factor. Of course. I just mentioned Darth Belichick. We're going to take a pause here. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's good. We have the a rematch. The rematch is on. Premium Pete is going out of his mind right now. And I'm just waiting um, on him to call in. I can't in. wait. The rematch. I cannot wait for him to call the in. The rematch. All right, well, let's jump right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a rematch of a Super Bowl, which we haven't seen in quite some time. If 40, at all. Well, let me say this right now. 49er fans, do not try to burn <laughs> Williams' house. Please. Or the Junction Bar. Oh, Junction Bar. <laughs> Please. How, how, how beaten to death do you think we're going to hear this whole rematch storyline? It's like the whole thing of Jerome Bettis from Detroit whenever they went back and played the Super Bowl Or there. it was going to be the, the Harbaugh. Shoe. Sure. sure. <laughs> I, I saw actually that one of the guys, the Harbaugh's agent, bought the licensing rights to that website today. To Harbaugh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Save it for next year, buddy. We could have had an old school rematch of the uh, Giants versus the Ravens today. Because that was one of the ones for the first time that the Ravens had won their Super Bowl. Very true. With so. Trent Dilfer. Yep. Yeah. That was uh, Ray Lewis and the young defense back then. Hey, yeah. look. I didn't mess it up. He's yeah. giving that I didn't mess it up look. It's the year of the kicker. The year of the kicker. That man. was one happy kicker right there. All right. Well, let's let's jump right into it, man. All right. With this rematch here. Hold on. Right off the bat. What do you guys think the line is? Ooh. Ooh. I would say I would say Patriots minus four, three and a half, four. Yeah, I'm giving it three. 
Yeah, I, I think it'd be probably somewhere around there, and every one of their moms is gonna be putting money on the Giants. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Why you, not? The Patriots are not gonna be an underdog in this game. What was the line? I'm curious what the line was in 2008 when they. Ooh, I think that was like six and a half or something like that, right around seven. And six and a half. Oh, oh, people made, people like made a killing on that game. Yeah. They oh yeah. Did. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it hit the that game hit the over. Yeah. It hit yeah. the uh, it hit all everything except for the Patriots covering. And you know what else? Gons hit it right on the head. Is it the year of the kicker? As the kicker is being yeah. interviewed right after the game. It Super came down to ball, it. it. It came down to it, man. I'll tell you what. Hey, uh, shout out to the 49ers. You know what? Preseason, Andrew, you picked this team yeah. to do a lot of a lot of good this year, and I really didn't think they were going to be this I. good. Can't win with them. Can't, Can't win, win with them. A double Harbaugh slaying today. <laughs> I just realized that. Both the Harbaugh brothers lost today, so yeah. shouts out to them. They had a great season, but that's kind of rough. One of them, yeah, one of them said he pushed it, and the other one said he made he it. He dropped it. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Exactly. Oh, nice little zigger <laughs> there. there. Yeah, People right, are talking about on Twitter that uh, the city of Indianapolis, they are going to see a Manning under center. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right. Man, y'all are on. Yeah. And one that, could have, one that could have two rings before the actual one that plays there. That would be so brutal. I mean, you know, there's always a debate about, you know, who's better, Peyton or Tom Brady. It would pretty much squash that completely and be like, well, let's talk about Eli maybe being better than his brother. I would say he is better than his brother if he wins the Super Bowl. Two? Two for two. If he's two for two and had to defeat the Patriots twice, <laughs> hey, uh, that's a better resume than what anything Peyton's done because all it comes down to for quarterbacks is rings. That's how you judge quarterbacks is rings. That's very true. So. That's what that's what Brady's judged on. True. So how can you not Montana? How can you not judge? That's why people believe Elway didn't get his to the end, but he finally got his. You know, Marino is still kind of left Marino's out of the loop. A bum. That's why Marino's a bum. Well, let's no. hey, let's get into Super Bowl <laughs> predictions right now. And that's my sarcasm. We still have an open microphone. <laughs>